All right, so we left off uh, wanting to, uh, at the point where we wanted to understand what, uh, you know, what architecture is um, essentially, and then what the A in ARM um, V8A mean, right? So architecture is just a document that describes how the CPU should operate, what all, you know, how it can, well, it doesn't talk about exactly how, it only talks about what all the CPU should do. And if a company is following that specification and creating an actual chip out of it, then that's like called the implementation of the architecture, right? So maybe even before we go to what A class is, uh, let's talk about two important keywords. One is called the architecture and the other one is called the micro architecture right so you'll kind of hear these keywords a lot when you're kind of you know working let's say with the hardware with the actual chip or you know in the semiconductor circles you'll you'll kind of hear these two keywords a lot and there's like a subtle difference between both of them right so architecture here let me write it as arc and then let's write mu arch for micro architecture so this is the micro architecture and this is just the architecture so the architecture is a document right it's so to speak specification right and a micro architecture is an actual implementation right and we'll de discuss the details in a while but this is an implementation now for example let's say you had a document that described different parts of a bicycle right and it talked about hey you know bicycle needs to have like two two rotating something circular you know half uh, it has to move forward uh, there has to be like a steering a place for the driver to sit uh, or the rider to sit and so on and so forth so you're just essentially describing like what this entity called bicycle should achieve right so that is an architecture but an actual implementation uh, by some company of that you know bicycle uh, uh, would be okay this is like the seat and then this is like maybe somewhere you know handle something so the actual implementation is then called the micro architecture and as you can imagine there are n number of ways of implementing uh, uh, the architecture you know some bicycles might just have like you know no gears a chain and sprocket kind of an arrangement with straight handlebars um, some might actually have uh, you know gears on them and also like a, a pillion seat uh, for someone else to sit on uh, sit, sit behind the main rider and maybe you know the handlebars are not straight they are like you know structured differently similarly the brakes can be implemented differently so the idea is given one architecture specification document you can implement of like the same architecture in different ways and the the as in case of bicycle the different implementations can have different degree of performance you know in one you can go uphill easily maybe in another one you know it's a the, i don't know you can burn fat more easily something like that so the idea then is the architecture can be one micro, micro architectures are like the implementations and then you know they vary they can vary but achieve the same effect so to speak all right so that's with respect to what architecture is what micro architecture is and now let's maybe talk about what this a here is so arm as a company uh, makes uh, well kind of gives out three types of architecture majorly for cpus one is called the m class architecture the other is called r class and then the final one is a class and these are typically targeted uh, to like the applications in which the CPUs would be used. So for example, if we are talking about very simple applications like, you know, remote control, ovens, uh, you know, just on and off, monitor and input, take some action, wait for some time, so on and so forth. Very simple, you know, one application uh, kind of a uh, kind of use cases, we are talking about M, which stands for the micro controller uh, cl a class of cpus right and we kind of also have 
like a separate 101 series for the M class CPUs because they're extremely popular. So that's for like M is for the microcontroller class. The R is for the real time use cases, right? Uh, real time class and real time might be, let's say the engine firing system, right? Um, the engine needs to fire at a particular rate and you know the hardware or the processor that's monitoring all of that firing, uh, that cannot miss a deadline. It has to be predictable. It has to be deterministic. So for deterministic systems, the R class of CPUs is what we use, right? And then in general, uh, when we want to have general purpose computing, like for let's say cloud, laptop, tablets, mobile phones, uh, the heavyweight, upli uh, not uplifting, but heavyweight lifting of or executing non-catastrophic applications like Linux, you know, Chrome browser, those kind of things, uh, that is done on top of the A-class CPUs and A-class stands for the application class, right? So your operating systems run on the A-class CPUs. Now, what are the different uh, electronics that uses the A-class CPUs? Well, if you are aware of the Apple um, MacBooks uh, line, which is based on the Apple Silicon, so the Apple Silicon M1, M2, M3, and M4 SOCs are based on the A-class CPU. That's the heavyweight CPU in that. Similarly, majority of the phones that are out there, in fact, I would say like 99% of the smartphones that are out there are based on the A-class, or are based on the A-class CPUs, right? The Android phones are based on this, the Apple phones are based on this for the most part. And then the infotainment of the automobiles that like the cars that are coming up these days is based on the A-class CPU as well. So then learning about the A-class CPU underlying functionality, how it works, uh, will just enable you to go and, you know, seamlessly work in all of these different verticals, so to speak, laptop, tablets, mobile phones, infotainment units, so on and so forth, uh, seamlessly. Also, if you wanted to learn more about, let's say, the, the Linux kernel, uh, understanding one of the CPUs becomes important and, you know, A-class can serve uh, uh, like a pretty good candidate in that um, uh, position. So long story short, you know, A-class is very widely used. It's all around us. And we would want to take a look at how to go about learning the CPU and what are like the bare essentials you need to know to be able to kind of, you know, contribute to a team that's working on the A-class CPUs.